All right, let's talk about Skype for business on-premises connectivity with Microsoft Teams rooms. Here we have a diagram of what we're looking at. So let's start with here. This is our Skype for business on-premises. Uh, in my lab, I have 2019, so we'll be going with Skype for business 2019. We have Active Directory, which we need for Skype for Business. So this is the on-premises Active Directory. And then we have Azure AD Connect. And this synchronizes users and, uh, and other things from Active Directory to Microsoft 365. So here in Microsoft 365, we have Azure Active Directory. And then in my environment, I'm going to use Exchange Online for my mailbox. So it's kind of a split configuration. It is not hybrid. I do not have Exchange down here anywhere. So all my Skype on uh, Skype for Business users are using Exchange online for their mailbox. So we'll go through in this video how to configure an account for Skype for Business, how to synchronize that over to Microsoft 365, and then how to create a resource in Exchange online that Teams Rooms can use. This is my domain controller, so I'm gonna go into Active Directory and create a new user for my Teams Rooms. So we're just gonna go super generic and just call it Teams Rooms with the logon name of Teams Rooms. And then I will set a password for it. Teams Rooms does not support changing password at next logon. And since this is kind of a uh, service account, we're gonna set the password never expires so that the resource account doesn't stop working uh, one day when the password is set to recycle. So there we go, we've created that. So now I've got a user, let me put it into the user's OU. Uh, ideally, we should have a dedicated Teams Rooms OU, but in my lab, I'm just gonna live easy, plus my group policies don't do much because it's just a lab. So now let me pop over to my Skype for Business server and enable this user for Skype for Business. I'm on my Skype for Business 2019 server and I brought up PowerShell. So let me paste in a command. And let me actually put this up here, what we're doing. So I'm, I'm a big PowerShell person for Skype for Business. Previous life we did, we did pretty much everything in PowerShell. So I'm just gonna run enable CS user the identity is Teams Rooms. That's the polite name or the display name we gave to our new user. This is the name of my pool. I'm gonna use the SAM account name as the first part of the SIP address. And then my SIP domain is flinchbot.com. So it's gonna create a user called Teams Rooms at flinchbot.com, or at least it'll assign that SIP address. So that created it. And then if I do a get dash CS user, Teams rooms at flinchbot.com. We see there's my user and there's my SIP address. So now we should be able to sign in to our Teams rooms with this account. So let me flip over to Teams rooms and get it configured to use this account. So now I'm on my Teams rooms and I'm going to go ahead and set it up with this Skype for Business account. So let's type in our Teams rooms at flinch bot.com the password and we're going to leave it as Skype for business only and I don't have modern authentication enabled in my lab so do that that finish and now we should be able to sign in to Skype for business and there we are we're signed in to Skype for business with our team's rooms so now we see it says cannot fetch calendar there at the top so we know that our exchange online has not been set up yet so let's pop over and set up exchange online i'm signed into the microsoft 365 admin center so let's see if our user has synchronized from our on-premises active directory to azure active directory so we'll just search for a username teams and they're there if you do this search and the name doesn't show up Go ahead and force a Delta synchronization or a full synchronization using Azure AD Connect. So I'll edit this and I'll have to assign it a license. Now the easiest way to do this is for me to assign it, in this case, a full Microsoft license, 365 license, and not the meeting room license. If you remember, the meeting room license does not have an exchange online license included because resource accounts are free 
with Exchange Online. However, this is the easiest way to create the Exchange Online mailbox. So if I pop over to mail, it'll give me a thing. This does not have an Exchange Online license. It does now. But if we wait a while, and we're talking about 30 minutes, I'll eventually have, see there, there you go, we're preparing the mailbox for the user. So in about 30 minutes, I'll have an Exchange mailbox. And then we could leave it at this, but I'm gonna, we're gonna convert it to a resource mailbox and uh, downgrade the license to the meeting room. So this is the easiest way to do it. There is a way to do it all using PowerShell and some more advanced trickery without having to play with the two licenses. And I'll put a link here to an article that discusses how to do that. But this is the easy way and I like easy ways. So I'm going with this method. It's been about 10 minutes actually, a little faster than I thought. And it looks like we have a mailbox. When we look at the user in Microsoft 365 Admin Center. We see this mail section has been populated. So let's pop over to Exchange Administrator and see what this looks like. We go to Recipients, Mailboxes, and we see here's the account as a user account. Now we want to convert this to a resource account. And to do that, we will run a PowerShell command. So let me connect to Exchange Online. So the PowerShell command we're gonna run is set mailbox, the name of the mailbox, and we're gonna change it to type of room. So set mailbox, teams rooms, and we'll set the type to room. Now that that's completed, we can hopefully look here at our resources and see that it is now a mailbox of the room type. So we can pop back to Microsoft 365 Admin Center and change the license to just be meeting room. And now we have our resource account like we want it. We have Skype for Business account created on premises. We have it synchronized to Microsoft 365. We have the right license. So now let's go to our MTR and see if everything is working. We're back on the Teams Room system. Again, signed in as at Teams Rooms at flinchbot.com room account. So let me create a new meeting and I'm going to invite, invite flinchbot at flinchbot.com and let's get a meeting going. So here we go, calling, answering on the other side on my uh, old school Surface Pro for that matter. Let's set this on thing. So there we go. This is the camera on the Surface and this is the camera on Teams Rooms. So there we are. We got Skype for Business up and running with Teams Rooms.